Hello, my preciouses, and welcome to the monitor. Obviously, because I called you that, you know it's Hobbit Week. So let's jump right in and talk about what Peter Jackson hath wrought these last few years filming in New Zealand, as we know now. He is turning the prelude to the Lord of the Rings trilogy into not two movies, as originally planned, but three, which means that one book is becoming about eight hours of movie, which might sound like too much, but then you look at a movie like Hunger Games that tried to digest an entire book and didn't exactly do it all that well. <clears throat> That's a discussion for another time. The Hobbit, if you have not read the book, is the prelude to the Lord of the Rings trilogy uh, and in events that happened well before Fellowship of the Rings, the first book in the trilogy. Now, you know Frodo Baggins, the hero of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but if you have not read the book The Hobbit, then you don't know Bilbo, his uncle, who is a hobbit living in Bag End and is notified by a somewhat younger Gandalf the Grey that Bilbo is to go on an adventure with all these dwarves to defeat a dragon and restore the dwarves' place. Uh, under the mountain, there are the Misty Mountains, which if you are a Led Zeppelin fan, you are well familiar with. There are the Mines of Moria, and there are lots of other things, including uh, a guy you may know named Gollum, played by the inestimable Andy Serkis. At any rate, the movie is filmed partially in 48 frames a second, which is a big bump up from the industry standard, and thus it takes on a hyper-crisp aspect that uh, people seem to be divided about. Some people think it's... Uh, disorienting and gives you a bit of a remove from the movie. Some people say, no, 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 this heralds a, an entire new technological vanguard of filmmaking. I am not going to judge this for you. You are going to judge this for yourself when you go see The Hobbit because it's out this weekend. Now let's talk about music. You miss Outcast. I miss Outcast. Everyone misses Outcast. Best hip hop duo of all time. No disrespect to Nice and Smooth. Now, until Andre 3000 and Big Boy get back together to do a real album together, not talking about the Idlewild soundtrack. We have Big Boy, who is thankfully putting out solo records, and his second official solo album is out this week. It is called Vicious Lies and Dangerous Rumors, and the Atlanta rapper has brought a veritable who's who of both rap and indie rock to the table. There's a few songs with Little Dragon, there's a few songs with Fantagram, he's got guest ver verses from The Usual Suspects, T.I., Ludacris, um, what's his face, uh, B.O.B. Now, it's kind of a glorious mess, and, and, and know that this is not the tightest album ever made, but know also that I love when people take risks, and this is the kind of album that just would not have existed before Outkast came around, and you know, love goes to Big Boy for saying, you know what, I listen to all this and I want to work with all these musicians. And, it, and there are low points for sure, but there are some really glittering high points. Some of the work with Fantagram and Little Dragon works way better than I ever would have expected. That is Vicious Lies and Dangerous Rumors. It is out this week from Big Boy. Take a listen. Now let's talk about my other favorite thing, which is comics. Okay, so last week I spoke a little bit about a new Image comic title called Blackacre, and I don't mean to keep going back to the same well, but there is something out this week on Image that I think you should probably know about. The book is called Change, and it is written by a young comic writer named Alice, A-L-E-S, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Alice Cott. Now, uh, Alice Cott is all of 26 years old, um, but over the summer he put out a graphic novel called Wild Children that was really ambitious and astonishing, and Change is a miniseries uh, with a different artist, an artist named uh, Morgan Jeske, but uh, Alice Cott is really experimental beyond his years. This is the story, or at least the beginnings of a story, that involve a rapper named W2, who is trying to uh, commission a screenplay for kind of a biopic of his life and kind of a weird Lovecraftian horror story, uh, a screenwriter named Sonia and her agent and a couple of unnamed shady characters in a van outside and an astronaut who is on his way back from a manned mission to Europa and there is just this crazy sense of foreboding that runs under the entire thing. There's some really astonishing artwork in here, there's some really astonishing writing in here. Um, from the first page, I kind of had this feeling of, I don't know exactly what's going on, but I really like how we're getting to it. Um, I like the dread that suffuses the entire thing. It is called Change. It starts this week. It is on newsstands in comic book shops online. Give that a shot. Okay, that is it for the monitor this week. We will be back next week, and then we've got some holiday goodies planned. You can always email us at this here address below my fingers. But until we see you next week, inspirational catchphrase here.